Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm going to do the first few um, questions, Q&As for you, and then I'm going to have my colleague Anne to come up, and she'll do the um, last remaining Q&As. Okay. So our, for our first one, regarding the pressure ulcer being a stage four in the acute facility, and now the earth admits with a stage three, Continuing to code on the earth pie as a stage four is not going to accurately match documentation which is going to be used to assign ICD-10 codes. Okay, and the answer for that is, if a patient is admitted with an ulcer that is documented as a stage four and when admitted to the earth, the same ulcer appears to be a stage three, you would still code this ulcer as a stage four as you do not reverse stage. Your ICD code would also be coded as a stage four until the wound is healed. Okay. All right, for our question number two. So if the patient routinely wears socks and shoes prior to admission and well, um, I'm sorry, and will need to at discharge, if only socks available and tested on admission in the three-day window due to lack of shoes, how do you code? 10, because both items are not available? Okay, and the answer for that is, the activity of putting on slash removing footwear refers to footwear that is appropriate for safe transfer and or ambulation uh, mobility. If the patient wears footwear that is safe, um, for example, like grip socks, then the data element may be coded. If the patient socks, is, patient socks are not considered safe for mobility, then code, sorry, it's on the next page. Then code appropriate activity, not attempted code, okay? I'm just gonna remove this so I can easily turn my pages. And we are gonna move on to question number three. If a patient is admitted with from the acute sorry, hold on. Okay. If a patient is admitted from the acute hospital and the pressure also is staged correctly and then the admitting nurse at the earth stages the ulcer incorrectly, we are then permitted to use the acute note the acute care notes for appropriate stage of the staging of the wound on the earth pie. Just wanted to clarify this. Okay, so the answer for this is, in this example, if you have documentation that a pressure ulcer slash injury is staged from the acute care hospital and the nurse in the earth has staged the wound at a lesser stage due to the pressure ulcer healing, you would choose the code documented, documented stage from the acute care hospital. If in this example, the nurse coded the pressure ulcer at an incre increased stage, then correct the code to the observed stage. So question four, sit to stand. Some stroke patients are pushers. During transfer activities, they are attempting to transfer, but they are pushing against the therapist and actually hurt progress towards the transfer. They are attempting, but it is not meaningful to the completed activity. Is this total assist? Okay, and the answer for that is, Use clinical judgment to determine the level of effort that the patient is contributing. In this scenario you describe, we interpret that the patient did not meaningfully contribute to the transfer and that the helper provided all of the effort. Therefore, you would code the item as one dependent. Okay, to our next question. So upper body dressing, how do you score if the patient normally wears a bra but doesn't have one to assess this during the um, first three days, the fir sorry, the first three days if you are able to assess, don't, I'm assuming that's supposed to be doff shirt, but um, no to the bra. So when coding section GG activities, 
code based on type and amount of assistance with the clothing used at the time of assessment. In the scenario you describe, assess item GG0130 F, upper body dressing with the shirt. Okay, so question number six. What time frame would be appropriate to say the wound was likely present in admission? The skin assessment should be completed as close to admission and pressure ulcer slash injury should be that should be assessed that are assessed to be um, present at the time should be coded in section M. Did you get that one? Okay. <laughs> All right. So what? So I'm going to read the question again. What time frame would be appropriate to say the wound was likely present on admission? So the answer is, the assessment should be completed as close to admission, and pressure ulcers slash injuries should, sorry, that should be assessed to be present. That are, I'm sorry, that are assessed to be present at that time at admission should be coded in section M. Is that a little better? So it's the first assessment. Yes. yes. The first assessment should occur as close to the time of admission as possible. Yes. And must be within the first three months. Yes, must, must be within, yes, as close to the admission as possible. Okay. So for Q&A 7, is a discharge code nine recorded as a one from the outcomes? And ERF should be expected to demonstrate improvement with activities that the patient did not complete at baseline. Not. Oh, I'm sorry, should, I'm sh should not. Okay. So the answer to this, yes, if an activity is coded 09 at discharge, it will be recorded to 01 for the functional outcome measure. If the patient needed assistance to perform an activity prior to the current illness, injury, or exacerbation, the prior function and items would be coded to indicate the patient needed assistance and any prior device use would be indicated and these data would be um, used for risk adjustment. So question eight, related to section GG self-care, I've seen elastic bandages indicate as lower body dressings and TEDs counted as a TEDs, anti-emboletic stockings counted as footwear. What if the elastic bandages cover the foot and are used for the same reason because TEDs don't fit? So cloven items that cover all or part of the foot even if it extends up to up the leg like a sock or ankle foot orth orthosis would be considered when coding footwear. When assessing GG0130H, putting on slash taking off footwear an elastic bandage or compression, compression stocking is considered footwear. If it was related to the task associated with putting on or off taking off footwear. Please see page GG17 of the Earth Pie Training Manual for information about some examples that are including footwear. And a few examples of these footwear um, include ankle sock orth um, orthosis, AFO, elastic bandages, for foot orthotic, orthopedic walking boots, compression stockings, um, consider footwear because the dressing is donned off over foot. Okay, so is the expected score determined by each element or just an overall score? Okay, the expected score is calculated at the level of self-care score and mobility score, not at the item level. Okay, 
What is the difference between continuous and squared scores? If the self-care score was 10, then the squared value would be 10 times 10, which is 100. Okay, and I'm gonna hand over to my colleague Ann to complete the rest of the Q&As. Okay, so number 11, the patient walks eight feet, how would you score uh, 10, walk 10 feet, how would you score 150 feet? For the walking activity to be coded using the six point scale, the activity must be completed. That is, the patient must walk the entire distance. If with or without assistance, a patient cannot walk the entire distance, the helper cannot complete the walking activity for the patient. And you would use uh, one of the activity not attempted codes. Oops. Did I? Okay. Number 12, uh, a patient is receiving the majority of nutrition via peg feedings but is able to drink PO clear liquids. Can we score eating when the patient is only getting PO liquids? The intent of GG0130A eating is to assess patient's ability to use suitable utensils to bring food and or liquid to the mouth and swallow food and or liquid once the meal is placed before the patient. In the example you described, the patient only takes clear liquids. Clinicians should use clinical judgment to determine if observing the patient taking clear liquids allows the clinician to adequately assess the patient's ability to complete the activity of eating. If the clinician determines that observation of taking clear liquids is adequate, code based on the type and amount of assistance required by the helper. If the clinician is unable to determine the patient's ability to eat, code one of the activity not attempted codes. What is the height of the curb step and one step in scoring? There are no specifications for the exact height of the steps for activities involved in steps. If you score a seven on discharge performance, so that's the patient refuse code, does it get a value of one for calculation of the quality indicator? Yes, a code of 07 at discharge is recorded is recoded, sorry, to a code of one for the quality measure calculation. For the GG section, we use metrics. Is 150 feet 45.7 meters or is it rounded up to 50 meters like FIM? In the scenario you describe, if you are using the metric system to measure the distance for this activity, you would assess the patient's ability to walk at least 45.7 meters in a corridor or similar space. Regarding coding uh, scenario five, the ulcer will be coded with the ICD-10 codes. Will it be a red flag when the claim form does not match the assessment? In scenario five, the patient was admitted with intact skin, and on day seven of the earth stay, a stage two pressure ulcer is identified on the coccyx, and a discharge, the pressure ulcer is healed. So as Anne explained, you're coding what's going on at admission, you're coding what's going on at discharge. In this scenario, the stage two pressure ulcer would not be captured on the earth pie because it happened outside of those two assessment time frames. So it's like prevalence at admission, prevalence at discharge. There may be diagnoses that are captured in the ICD-10 codes that may not be identified on the earth pie as this is looking at two different time points of admission and discharge. Number 17, referring to mucosal ulcers, is a pressure ulcer in the area of a G-tube peg considered a mucosal ulcer. The stoma area of the G-tube is considered mucosal, but the skin portion would not be considered mucosal. Number 18, what is the rationale of having a pressure ulcer that worsened or manifested during interrupted stay being owned by the earth pie? If the patient has an interrupted stay and returns to the earth with a new pressure ulcer or injury, that pressure ulcer or injury is not considered present on admission. For program interruptions, the two segments are this, of the stay are considered one stay, and when the person returns to the earth, uh, a new uh, assessment is not completed. 
And that is the wrap up. So I will turn it back over to Bridget.